Welcome to our weekly whiskey podcast. Normally we host these episodes in Dutch, but today we're talking English again because we have a very special guest over today. We are going to talk about this Pictish Beastie, volume number one, so the first expression. And we have a guest here who can tell us all the ins and outs. Um, Ian, how are you? Hi, I'm very good, thanks. I'm very good. Thanks very much for having me on. Really glad to have you here. Um, we are sitting here together and we're going to sample this first expression of the Pictish Beastie. But before we do so, um, I would like to, to get to know you first. Like, um, who are you? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> who am I? Uh, so I am a 30, year, somehow I'm now 30 year old Scottish guy who lives in Glasgow, but is from Edinburgh. And somehow I've ended up in the whiskey industry after getting a music degree in Manchester uh, in my early 20s. And yeah, and now I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> <laughs> how it's ended up like this but um but yeah yeah so it's, uh, somehow i find myself running fib whiskey uh, a wee independent bottler based in the fife and um and yeah and uh, and it's a pleasure to be talking to you guys just now i want to sh- slowly dissect this whole story <laughs> you got a music degree yes i do i do have a music degree um my degree yeah i, I um, like i said i studied down in manchester mm-hmm. um kind of in the middle of england i suppose um they call it i think they still call it the north down there but yeah it's kind of the middle um <laughs> everything is south to me you see yeah and, definitely and being from scotland but yeah. um yeah i i studied um trumpet playing actually okay. um that was that was my degree at the royal northern college of music and um and yeah, it, it turns out that it took four years of studying trumpet playing to be like, mm-hmm, maybe I don't want to play the trumpet <laughs> <laughs> full time. Um, so uh, but to be fair, I still I still do lots of things with music um, and I, I sing with my brother and we have a band and stuff like that. But I think it made me realize that I didn't want to do trumpet playing, but I wanted to do other bits of music. Um, but it was still a fun time. And uh, yeah. and I still and, liked whiskey then as well. And, and naturally, the alternative to professional trumpet player is whiskey, whiskey butler whiskey yeah butler <laughs> yeah yes. whiskey butler, yeah that, yeah it was a funny one it happened um yes it happened kind of slightly all of a sudden uh last year this last year uh, i guess last year so that's the year before i was kind of doing bits and bobs before we actually started doing stuff i was kind of helping getting fib set up and things like that mm-hmm. and doing a lot of the leg work um, and yeah, it's it's all been a bit of a blur, really, because obviously we had COVID and then we um, and lockdown and then um, and I had a job. I was um, and even weirder. I was I had a sales job um, selling bins, like okay. fancy re- mm-hmm. <laughs> fancy recycling bins. They sound mm-hmm. better than the you know none none of your none of your wheelie bins. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, so I was doing that, and then um, I was doing music as well, and uh, and then COVID hit, and then we had lockdown. I was like, mm, do I really want to? selling bins when i go back after lockdown um and then yeah this kind of whiskey opportunity sort of fell into my lap because um because it was i started it with one of my good friends um and yeah and that's that's how i ended up there um yeah a funny a funny story but before we get into to fib itself like how did you get in 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 contact with whiskey in, in 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 yeah growing up in scotland i can imagine you are surrounded by whiskey but yeah, um, I suppose yeah. In Scotland, you always are surrounded by whiskey. Like, if you want, if you want to be, I suppose it's not exactly thrust in your face. Obviously, it's like one of the main, um, you know, it's one of the main exports, and it's one of the national pride things for Scotland. Apart from like Iron Brew, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apart from I think it, I think um, it is the, our national drink. But yeah, I didn't really. I I did kind of get into it all of a sudden. Um, and it was with uh, it was because of Aiden who uh, we start started Fib who started Fib. Yeah, I was kind of I didn't mind whiskey. I think um, I had it over the years a little bit, and I went I went with um I went with him on his first ever distillery trip well, on his eighteenth birthday to I don't think it was on his birthday, but it was his eighteenth mm-hmm. birthday present. We went to Glen Goyne Distillery, um, just north of Glasgow, nice. and um and yeah, and kind of gradually he ended up dragging me around. Like, and <laughs> almost every distillery, I think we went to about nearly 40 in Scotland. Um, and yeah, all of it started with like one week long trip to Isla, where we went like around all, there was only eight distilleries at the time, I think. Um, mm-hmm. So we went around all the ones that were open at the time. Um, and yeah, and, uh, and yeah, it didn't really look back after that. So you sort of went from, mm, sure, I'll have a bit of whiskey to Isla. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it's like... It's the baptism of fire, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Quite literally, a baptism of smoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, a baptism yeah. of Pete. I would say that during that trip, it was ma- it, like I swear you would wake up in the middle of the night and like um, <laughs> you know because you, usually you were like really you know dehydrated because you've been drinking whiskey all mm-hmm. day. So I'd go to the tap and get some water, and it would taste like Pete. Like everything yeah. on the island tastes like Pete. But it was a good introduction to like. You know, because I was drinking heavily pieces of whiskey all all week, like I ended up getting into it really fast, and it made all it made you know all all kinds of whiskey seem palatable when you're doing lots of like octomores on your first trip. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely, yeah, that definitely. Is, that is, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering. You mentioned uh, Aiden as, as as a good friend of you that, that basically dragged you into the whiskey industry. Um, but can you tell me, like, who is Aiden? Yeah. So Aiden was uh, he was one of my best kind of he, he was a very a very good friend um basically a, a, my whole life he was a kind of childhood friend because our parents were like they were family friends and then yeah so basically basically we just um I, I didn't really have any i don't have any cousins which everyone finds kind of weird um okay. but because of <laughs> because of that i was kind of like he, he, th- their family was probably the closest kind of thing to, mm-hmm. to having some cousins um, so yeah, just just kind of saw them through the years and um, from childhood friends until until early this year when he sadly passed away. Yeah, it was um, yeah, and obviously because he had a, he had a disability as well. Like he was um, his life had been quite challenging because he had like a spinal fracture from I don't remember which vertebrae it was, but it basically meant that he was paralyzed from the neck down. But he had been mm-hmm. since he was age two from a car accident. So like, but I'd always known him like that. So you know, whereas it seems really extreme. To some people who might see it like oh my goodness like this is such a complex care situation to me i just always known him like that so it was just kind of normal um yeah. and then yeah because of he because of, throughout the years because of he didn't have his other senses he became he developed a very very good palate and hence yeah. hence got into whiskey like a madman and probably drank too much of it <laughs> <laughs> and, and and he was um you studied uh, to become professional musician did yeah. did Aiden also study music? Um, no, Aiden Aiden did not study music. Probably a good thing his singing was terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whenever, in fact, it was on that Isla trip. I remember, like, he would put on lots of whiskey songs and sing them on the way back from distilleries when he was like uh, very drunk, and then you'd usually fall asleep halfway through. Um, so no, he he studied up in um, St Andrews, which is like uh, the kind of uh, the, cle- oh. the pl- place that you go and study if you're very clever in Scotland. <laughs> in Scotland, okay. so I didn't I didn't quite fit that mold. Um, so he he went and studied um, classics, um, and yeah, he, he he did a kind of a whole undergraduate degree and uh, masters. Um, and yeah, that's my my brother actually studied up there as well. My younger brother, um, he he's involved in alcohol as well. He's a distiller. Um, okay. Not whiskey, but gin. Uh, he makes gin oh, cross bill oh, wow. uh, in Glasgow. So, um, but yeah, they both studied up there. So yeah, I was like, kind of up seeing them quite a lot. But yeah, no, he was. Um, he wasn't doing whiskey either to start with. Although he did end up um, after he did all these kind of classical studies stuff. He did do a kind of brewing and distilling course from it's Harriet Watt University that offer that um, in in Scotland. And to be fair, they probably offer other places as well. But um, but yeah, that that was his kind of journey to gradually getting into whiskey through like it was the whole St Andrew's whiskey and um, student whiskey society that basically wrote, roped him into it okay and 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 who started off FIP like whose idea was it the the whiskey society or yeah, yeah. in St Andrew's I think it had been going for quite a long time to be honest it had probably been going uh, there's a I, can't, I don't actually know who started that but it was um the guy who is um one of the main uh, the, the manager of Luvian's Bottle Shop, um, which is one of like the main, if you people are from Scotland or if they visited St Andrews or stuff like that, they've probably been in this bottle shop. Um, it was yeah. a chap in there called Archie McDermott who was heavily involved with the Whiskey Society as well. Um, and then, yeah, it's been going for a long time and it'll, I'm sure it still will go f- uh, continue on for a long time. And um, yeah, Aidan eventually ended up becoming president of that um, society for many years, um, which was quite a... Um, quite drastic uh, from when it started out when he went when he they used to hold their tastings like up in a upstairs room that he couldn't access so he would actually just go yeah. to the downstairs floor um and then use like zoom like we're doing now um to zoom in to the to the um to the waste whiskey tastings and but then usually afterwards the whoever would come to you know whichever distillery or bottler had come um whether it was 
Fitz or, one, or John Moore or one of the others, they would come down afterwards and chat to Aiden. So he'd get his own personal thing afterwards. So <laughs> he always knew these guys very well by the end of it. Okay, and so like he, he, he started building up a, a, a network of, of people working in the whiskey industry and connections. Um, was that the trigger also to start as an own bottler of whiskey? I think I think it was, yeah. He started getting into more and more independent bottlers and single casks, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually decided, much like I did with music, although he'd been studying classics, um, he probably didn't want to do that in the end because um, yeah. he was he was an academic and he was very very clever um, and you know real, uh, he was proper academic, um, and the completely yeah. complete op complete opposite of me. Um, mm. But yeah, he so uh, eventually decided that he wanted to go more in the kind of um, whiskey direction, probably because of Louv spending so much time in Louvians with Archie and. Um, and he became good friends with uh, with Kenny, um, who started Dram Dram Moore, the independent bottling company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who are kind of they they started up a kind of a year or two before us. So he, he became good friends with Kenny, and yeah, he got really into sampling loads of single casks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think he decided that he wanted to um, to start that. And it, he actually registered. I think he was back in 2019 or 18. He registered the company for the first time under a different name. Um, because yeah. then it turned out someone stole the. It was originally going to be called um, Kilrimmont um, Distilling or Kil <laughs> Kilrimmont uh, Distillers, I think, or Kilrimmont Limited. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there was a, another um, gin slash whiskey distillery, Eden Mill, who are in, in St Andrews. They ended up trademarking mm -hmm. the name. Oh no! So I know, but to be fair, I think Fib's better actually. So I, I do like Fib. It's catchy. But where does the name Fib come from? So Fib, um, so this Aiden would have been a lot better to tell you about all of this than me. Okay. Although I'm kind of slightly getting slightly getting to grips with it. But yeah, Fib, it was basically the ancient Pictish name for the kingdom of Fife, um, which is kind of where uh, where we are based. And you know, there's there's not a, um, there's not there's, historically there's not been a huge amount of distilleries in Fife. There were more before they closed. Um, but you know, but nowadays obviously we've got kind of Kings Barns and you've got Lindor is happy happy. Um, and then obviously you've got the, the huge Cameron Brig distillery, the Diageo one, which is in Leven. So, um, so yeah, uh, Fib, Fib was the, the Pictish name for the kingdom of Fife. Obviously the Picts, I don't know if people know much about them. They're kind of an ancient civilization, kind of slightly mysterious. Not, we don't know a huge amount about them apart from a lot of carvings that they left on stones mm -hmm. and things like standing stones around Scotland. And, um, yes, there, it was basically the, um, story is there was a Pictish king of uh, picked land at the time or scotland picked land uh, it's probably not quite the same thing but um and he didn't know he had seven sons and basically he just divided scotland into seven different uh, areas and king okay. fib uh, his son was the one who got five um so yeah that's where i kind of pictish pictish theme came from and aiden's dad um was actually one of the the go-to guys in scotland on pictish history so he wrote a lot of oh. books about like Pictish stones, and he would go around the mall and like draw, kind of like um Indiana Jones style, you know, drawing <laughs> like stones and like tracing nice, them yeah. into books. So yeah, he, that's so that's where the whole kind of Pictish um thing came from. So Aiden grew up around that. Right. Yeah. So what about we have this gorgeous bottle here, the Pictish Beastie? What what about the Beastie? Beastie, yeah. So it, it, just following on from all that that Pictish kind of um. Pictish influence. The Beastie um, is basically our mascot. He's he features in the Fib um, logo, um, and it's it's just a it's a symbol slash animal that kind of comes up um, on a lot of stone carvings around Scotland, like left by the Picts, and mm -hmm. no one quite knows what it is. Like no one knows whether it almost looks like a kind of sea <laughs> that was my horse. next question. <laughs> yeah, no one quite knows what it is. It kind of looks like a. A seahorse. People were thought it was a kind of sea monster, but then some people thought, you know, was it mm -hmm. a creature of the land? And some people thought it was like um, Capricorn, possibly. But yeah, yeah no I one know, quite. That's... Yeah, no one quite knew what it was. Mysterious, basically. <laughs> I've sort read of... somewhere on the website that some people uh, s thought it to be a, a hybrid between a dolphin and an elephant, yeah. which yeah, really kind of, I yeah, yeah. Some people just call it like a sea a sea yeah. elephant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that. Sure. I thought it looked more like the hat of a hunting dog with a ponytail and then a mermaid tail. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good description it's, as well. It is, it is a weird one, isn't it? And, uh, 
yeah, yeah. it's lovely and i get the elephant thing <laughs> it's, if you twist it if you turn it a bit yeah i get that yeah I like it's it, more though. of a trunk yeah yeah i like that it is open to interpretation exactly yeah oh. um yeah it, it, it basically is yeah, the pictish beastie it's whatever you want it to be <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I do really like the bottle and also like the the way the label is designed I really do mm -hmm. like it but the bottle is only half of it I just want to talk about like what's inside of the bottle um this isn't the f like it's the first release of the Pictish Beastie but it's not your first release of whiskey wasn't it uh, the Pictish Beastie so it wasn't our first um whiskey it was our first blended whiskey that we'd done yeah um and yeah. we, we first released whiskey back in um it was october i think it was, was it september or october last year um okay. and yeah that's that's when we first brought out our kind of copper and oak range um and then we brought out another permutations range i'm sure we can i'm sure we can like get in, yeah. get into like what they're all about um and yeah those bottles looked a little bit different um and yeah for this pictish beastie bottle we kind of went to make it look a bit different because we wanted it to kind of be a bit more like have a bit more graphic art on it like so it jumps mm -hmm. yeah. out and um yeah our the, the kind of um the artist slash graphic designer um uh who's a scottish lady, a scottish lady called orla stevens she did a really good job with that um she actually stays in germany just now like so she's probably closer to you than me to be honest. yeah than to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> really nice definitely um just the different series you mentioned the copper and oak series I, I i imagine it refers to distilling and maturing yeah so Copper and Oak series. So that basically, it was basically came into being as one of Aiden's ideas when we started Fib was basically to split casks, uh, split the liquid of casks into two. Um, so it was an mm -hmm. idea that he wanted to play around with, where basically we, when we got a cask from a distillery, what we did was we bottled half of it. Um, exactly as the cask came so you know we hadn't played around with it we hadn't finished it done nothing at all um, and then basically mm -hmm. we finished the other half of the same cask in some finishing casks mm -hmm. of our choosing um, so mm -hmm. basically um, we could then do a before and after of whiskey from the same single cask before and after so you can see how it changed and the copper and oak okay. was basically the first half of this. So the copper, the copper and oak, yeah, basically just referred to Aiden named it like that because you know that the only two things that influence the the whiskey up to this point, basically, you know, the copper from the stills and the oak um, from the barrels or from the washbacks or but yeah, those the, the basic, basically stripped down, not, nothing added, nothing taken away. This the copper and oak was just exactly as we get it. And I think I think some I think there's another whiskey company that does a series called As We Get It. Um, but yeah, so same kind of thing. Yeah, and then you like the before and after. This is the series in which you release the the the, the, the f like whiskey that has been finished on stuff like uh, different casks or anything. So yeah, the before and after. Um, so yeah, uh, the 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 before and after basically may, is is a combination of our copper and oak and our permutation series. So the permutations is the after, um, which we kind of you know okay. the permutations had a kind of scientific name. Um, as to being, you know, uh, ch changing. It's like, you know, chemical. I think it's just to do with chemical changes. Um, so yeah, this is the way mm -hmm. that the copper and so the copper and oak, when we've re-racked it into some finishing cask that we've sourced, um, this is how it's changed. Um, and basically, you can buy the before, you can buy the copper and oak by itself, or you could buy um, the permutation by itself, or you could buy them both together if you want the kind of before and after experience of the same single cask to see how it's changed. Um, and yeah, so we we, uh, we did some quite radical finishes um, when we when we first started, uh, not entirely okay. intentionally, but um, they turned out pretty radical. <laughs> and what did you guys uh, finish on? So the, the first uh, the first series that we released um, in copper of copper and oak came out uh, last year, and that was eight whiskies. And then we finished them in this time around. Um, we very kindly were offered some uh, wine barracks by um it was a mm -hmm. connection with luvian's um bottle shop um that i mentioned in st andrews basically one of the old managers of that was a chap called andy cook and um <clears throat> he basically okay. decided that he wanted to go and kind of study winemaking a number of years ago so um he went to new zealand and studied that for a while um and then moved back and uh, a few years ago founded um uh, tramontane wines which is a a winery right in yeah. the south of mm -hmm. uh, the southeast of France on the kind of Catalan coast region so quite near Perpignan in that, in that corner 
Um, so he started a winery there and very kindly and um, because of the kind of Fife Louvain's connection, um, he spoke to Aidan and yeah, offered us, um, we got, I think we have six, six barriques we got, wine barriques we got off him um, as soon as he'd emptied them out. Um, so we just had to, we had just had to sh arrange shipment um, from, I just had to arrange shipment from the south of France up to Scotland, which was a lot harder than I thought actually after Brexit, but we, we got them there in the end. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we had some really interesting wine casts, which was basically what he had available. Um, so two of our mm -hmm. um, two of our series were finished in um, uh, white wine casts. These were Roussan from the Roussan grape, and two of them were finished mm -hmm. in uh, Syrah, uh, red wine casks, and then two of them were finished in a, a River Salt um, Ombre cask, which is a kind of fortified um, amber, mur almost like a murky sweet wine from the south. France it's like it doesn't look very nice in the bottle it almost looks like a, a muddy puddle or something but it tastes amazing oh. so we had we had um we had okay. those six yeah we had those six casks and then we also had uh two that were kind of some Pedro Jimenez um brandy casks we got from um very well uh, from, from a contact as well and those were quite interesting as well because they were like really old um, the casks themselves were actually fifty, uh, fifty years old. Like they'd been in the, they'd been in the Botica system for fifty years. So they basically held sherry for most of their life, and then near the end of their life, they held the Botica's brandy, and then we got them after that. Um, and yeah, one our most popular whiskey, mm -hmm. I'd say, apart from the Pictish Beastie that we've done, was finished in one of those. It was a, it was a Deanston, um, that we finished for about six months, I think, in one of those casks. So yeah, that one oh, sold out really fast. That's um, neat. Really, I'm curious now. <laughs> No, nah, I do. I do like a good Deans then. Now, nah, then, then, then you're in luck. Because, but we'll get to that in a bit. The the first release of the the, the Pictish BC now, um, the bottle. Like for everyone who's listening this in the Netherlands, this is the whiskey that people can actually try together with us uh, today. Mm -hmm. Should I? Um, no, 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 no. You you are always so impatient <laughs> if if there's a bottle of whiskey on the table, right? <laughs> I just want to try it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one, the first release, uh, consists of two barrels. Like everything beforehand was a single cask, and now it's a uh, a blend of two casks. W w what types of barrels are used for the first release? So yeah, um, you're right. Yeah, for, so for the Pictish Beastie Volume One, yeah, I wanted to create something that was basically almost single cask, like we've done everything single cask. Um, but I wanted to make something that was like a little bit more affordable in kind of terms of price, because obviously everything is so expensive right now. Um, so yeah, I wanted definitely. to make something that was still a very good cask strength whiskey, um, high quality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just uh, like you say, I just used two two single casks. Um, so one of these casks, uh, so which makes up um fifty four percent of the whiskey, um, was uh, a Cameron Cameron Brig or Cameron Bridge, depending on how you say it. Um, so that comes from <laughs> Diageo's uh, distillery in Leven. It's like you know, it's a huge mm -hmm. huge distillery. Uh, most most of the uh, single grain that is produced there probably goes into Johnny Walker and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't get a okay. massive amount of single casts from it, but you do see quite a lot of Cameron Bridge around. Um, and I'm, I'm a big single grain fan, so I, I do like some um, old Cameron Bridge. So um, so yeah, that was that made up 54% of it. I think that was an 11 year old um, uh, Cameron Bridge. And it was, a, it was a little bit raw at that age, as you can guess from a single grain. So um, what we did was we finished it off um, for a few, for, uh, few couple of months um in a, a sherry butt that had basically previously held mm -hmm. some 15 year old glenallachy single cask um okay. which probably gives you a clue to what's going to be coming out in our <laughs> releases later on this year um, <laughs> possibly no so, idea no no idea um, so that made up that made up half of uh, well, just over half of it and then the other single cask which was a, amounted to 46 percent that was a that was the single malt and that came from deanston um, distillery um, so that one was, uh, it was nine years old, which is why, because obviously that's the youngest one, so that's why the, mm -hmm. the blend is nine years old. Um, and we gave that one a sherry finish as well. Um, so that was finished in a first fill PX um, hogshead. And yeah, we basically, uh, we, uh, we were, you know, we, I, was, I was quite, wor it's the first time I've played around with blending, so I was a bit nervous to see what the result would be. But it, tur it turned out, um, it turned out, um, you know, it's had a good, it's had a good reception from everyone who's got it so far. So no, I'm, I'm pleased, and, um, and fortunately, um, I've only used half of each of the cask, each of the Cameron Brig and Deanston. So, the other halves are still in the sherry casks. So, 
um, there might be room for a little Pictures Beastie Volume 2 in like a year or something when it's, you know, that'll be more of a sherry bomb, where this is like only kind of lightly, it's only lightly sherry. Yeah, I was wondering because like you have the, the bottles are numbered and there are 250 bottles, uh, at least uh, officially on the label. Uh, <laughs> does yeah, it yeah, mean yeah. like, so you are saving the rest and, and, and are you also like looking forward to, to, to make basically the same recipe but only with two more years or year more of maturation or yeah, is it so that, most likely that of, there will be another ingredient yeah no it'll pro it'll probably be the same ingredient the same ingredients and c unless we mm -hmm. need unless we need uh, you know unless we feel like it needs something else um but it'll kind of it's quite nice because it ties into our kind of before and after thing even though we've done a blend so it's not single cast we can still do a before and after where you've had it like stage one and then you can have it in a couple of years or a year yeah. stage two um, and then obviously we'll run out of that, so we'll have to do a new Pictish Beastie, but one in stage one and two. Um, so we'll nice. have to come up with a new uh, a new recipe for that one. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the plan basically to, to use the same uh, to use the same same recipe, slightly different, obviously depending on how much is in left in each cask. Um, and yeah, and, and and see how that one comes out in a year or so. Really amazing. I'm very curious. Um, that is, I really like that. I like that you. Um, you show people like this is what we've got, and this is what we've got if we give it some more time and a different cask. And, yeah, different cask, perhaps indeed a, a little bit of extra something, um, but it it shows people what you can do with what you've got, yeah. with only a, a little a little patience, little knowledge, little. I like that. Yeah, it's interesting, and it's yeah. kind of like. Um, yeah, we we and we try and try and be transparent. Like that's kind of, we kind of we play on the kind of like no fibs as well, like type thing. Like we try and so everything that we do, we try and like give all the information where possible. Like all the information that we have. Um, so yeah, no, it's 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 cool, and it's like um, I always find that these sometimes like I'll run before and after tastings, or we'll have like six drams, so we'll have like three copper and oak and three permutations from the same cast. So it's effectively only three casks, but before and after three times mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah it's always really interesting um you know for it's really good for beginners who don't know how casks affect whiskey much but it's also equally good for people who are like really experienced in whiskey because even like it's quite an unusual thing to do i don't think that many indie bottlers have done a similar oh, thing where they've kind of released the same cast before and after um not not exactly in this way anyway so no it makes for it makes for a really fun tasting yeah. mm -hmm. um also, what I find very, very nice is it, it's it officially it's a blended scotch. We, we have a single malt and a single grain put together, but still it's at cask strength. So it's it's a hefty 58.8% mm. ABV. Yes. Um, is this uh, something from, from, from Aiden where he's like, I do like my cask strength sampling? Or why did you put it out on cask strength? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we just, we haven't added any, any water to anything yet. And... I don't think we probably. <laughs> I don't think we um we probably want to in a hurry um because we just kind of mm -hmm. like to kind of um, give the whiskey exactly as you know ex if if we feel that if if you think it needs a little bit of water then we can give you or whoever the drinker the choice instead of like watering it down to start with and then they might think oh I wish this was a little bit stronger um so mm -hmm. at least we at least we can kind of give people the choice if they want to add a little bit of water to open it up or. Um, then they can, but yeah, me and Aiden were very into our cask strength whiskies, and um, and yeah, it's um, it can be, it's trickier to do obviously because it does it does affect the price slightly because obviously you, uh, when you add water you get a lot more bottles out of it, and then um, you know so because you're paying a lot of tax on bottling the whiskey, it makes it you know at least you can it, it does make it a bit cheaper when you water it down a bit, but nah, we were we we're always very keen on that, that fib of just like just this is how we got it, this is what you know what we've done with it. No, mm. no, nothing added. No fibs, basically. Nice. I like that. Um, about price, there's something that I want to want to discuss re very briefly because, um, I feel like this is more on the high end, premium side of things. You, you have co given complete transparency, uh, cost strength, uh, all the uh, check text, uh, check boxes. <sighs> all the boxes are checked. I haven't had any whiskey today. My English is so <laughs> roughly. But no, your English is very good. That's better right, than my daughter. Right. Uh, and also, also, <laughs> it's it's. I mean, it's limited. Like we said, you've got what you've got. You're not distilling anything. It's not something that you can blend yourself. I mean, you could, but yeah. you'd have to find the exact same barrels again. Yeah, it is, a, it is a kind of, yeah, like you say, it is a limited kind of, um, you know, it, we won't do one that's exactly the same again. 
Um, so yeah, it is. It is still just limited. It's almost like it's like it's, like, it's almost like a double cask. I think kind of. I think Compass Box did something similar um, a few years back. I think it was maybe called the double single, where they used kind of two single <laughs> casks yes, to do that. Yeah. Um, so no, a similar kind of thing. So no, yeah, it is it is limited and. Yeah, pricing it probably is for a blend blended scotch. It probably is more on the the slightly more premium end. Um, but I guess I guess mainly just because at most uh, premium blended scotches, they're still usually watered down. They're it's usually a much bigger batch than two hundred and fifty bottles, and then yeah, definitely. Um, and they they do tend to usually kind of water it down to forty six percent or fifty percent or something like that. Um, so yeah, although I did have a very good one last night from um. Uh, North Star actually, that was a uh, one of their blends that they brought yeah. out. Not it was called the Joker or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly. The Fool, that was it. Um, and that was another one okay. that was like a very good price for like a cast strength blend. What 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 is currently the the, the price for a bottle if people at home want to want to buy one? So the the price. Um, this is why I try and work out European pricing. But the the, the UK price is basically it's fifty four pounds for 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 a bottle. Um, and then obviously. We don't actually because it's it's just just me doing everything at the moment. It's a kind of one man band situation for the company. Mm. So I'm in kind of discussions with with kind of importers, but um, I have don't have like a formal importer for the Netherlands just yet. Um, so at the okay. moment, if people want to order it, they can just buy it directly from uh, from 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 us. Um, and then obviously it's a little bit cheaper because you don't pay the UK um, duty. Um, but then obviously it costs a bit for shipping and then you have to pay the, the duty um, when it arrives in, in the Netherlands as well. So it's a kind of, yeah, it's, it kind of evens out, but obviously the shipping is a bit more. But um, I've always found Netherlands deliveries very fast for some reason. Like DH, DHL Express okay. are me mega quick. Like they, it's, Yeah, I believe that like you, you sent the bottles over for, for the people out here to, to, to taste it. And mm. I believe the next day I got it in like here at yeah. my doorstep. I'm like... I know. Nice. If, I send, okay, if cool. I send things to Scotland, like up the north somewhere, it takes longer. <laughs> like, so it's obviously, yes. yeah, really. So it's obviously like uh, straight through. Is it will it be shipful? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but you know, it's very quick wherever it goes through. Anyway, that, that's for sure. But, um, but yeah, at the moment, yeah, it's fifty. It's fifty four pounds roughly, um, and then you can just get it directly from us. But yeah, hopefully at some point, um, you know, if if the listeners have any excellent importers, if if the listeners like it. And uh, and want to you know and want to suggest mm -hmm. to any importers mm -hmm. you should you should contact these guys and yeah I'd totally be <laughs> I'd totally be open to that because I'd love to I'd love to kind of sort out a kind of proper um, a proper imp import into the into the Netherlands so that you guys can get it at the same price as I can here basically mm -hmm. I was I was doing a quick Google search I was like there must be somewhere in the Netherlands but nope nope oh. nowhere nowhere cannot find a Dutch prize. No, um, no, no, no. Can't find yet. a lot of Dutch prices on books on the Pictish Beastie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's also a book uh, called the Pictish Beastie. Oh, tons. Oh, okay, sorry. Hist history books. Yeah, okay, fair, fair point. Yeah. Um, we've been talking about it a lot. Now I'm really interested. Uh, you are eyeballing the glass that's on the table right here in front of us. <laughs> um, Ian, could you could you guide us through a, through a bit of a nosing and tasting uh, about this, this this first release of the Pictish Beastie? Yeah, yeah, I, I certainly can do. So the tasting notes. These ones were lovingly provided by my um, by my brother because um, he's actually okay. he's got he's actually got a very good nose um this is the this is the guy who works uh, as, a, as a gin distiller <laughs> in uh, in glasgow it um, helps it helps it does it does help yeah yeah so he's very good with these botanicals and stuff so um i always find this i'm i i'm not quite sure what to, i really like this whiskey but it really confuses me because it's because it's just like a the two distilleries like I'm like, oh, it tastes like a single grain. Oh wait, no, it tastes like a single malt. And I can feel like you can actually feel the two distilleries and the gla you can actually pick them out. Um, whereas obviously normally in a blend, there's so much stuff in there. Um, it just has the kind of normal character, you know, the same characteristic. But it's weird. I feel like you can kind of um, pick them out. Um, but yeah, on on the nose from this one, um, it's a kind of you get a kind of charred. Um, I've got down here that you get a kind of charred creme brulee. Um, which I would kind of, <laughs> okay. which um, is a, you know, I I do actually kind of get the kind of, I think that the the X, um, the fact that we finished off the Cameron Brig and the um the Glenallachy cast, I get a lot of Glenallachy like earthy, musky mm -hmm. kind of characteristics yeah. from that. Um, so I get a, I get a lot of that kind of thing on the nose, um, and then kind of like. I don't. What, I don't know what tasting notes you you you, you want to fire some back at me or. What I find very funny is like um, 
you mentioned like that you're a big fan of single grains. Mm. Um, and my favorite single grain distillery uh, is Cameron Bridge. So mm. that's actually one that I really do like. And it has this very nice, lightly, um, freshly, um, yeah, almost this freshly baked uh, apricot uh, pie. Oh, sure. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. I also get a lot of... A lot of <laughs> you're just saying yeah, yeah, and you're like no. <laughs> oh, no, I totally agree with that. We get we always whenever we do like uh, yeah, the Cameron the Cameron Briggs and like um, and like it was then the Port Dundas that we did recently. Yeah, I do find a lot of kind of baked fruit puddings and like like mm-hmm. dessert basically. Yeah. So that's 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 the first thing that pops like out of it for me. But but it's like you are a big fan of Deanston, and I do really like my Cameron Bridge. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's it's I'm I'm currently focusing on 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 the single grain part. Mm-hmm. The the Glen Ellicky normal like a normal Glen Ellicky has this very oily um, and this this almond oil um, nose and, and, and taste to mm. it. So that's w- something that I'm looking out for, which I can't really find on the nose currently. Mm. I would agree um, with you that on the nose there probably is more of the kind of sweetness from the single grain for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think when you get in when you actually get into the um, the dram and you kind of on the palate then you get slight you know you as you go through it you do get some of the kind of subtle sherry elements near the end because when i when you first Mm -hmm. start it i just get like fruit like (laughs) loads of fruit um and like you said a lot a lot of kind of baked desserts are kind of like um a bit of almost like uh vanilla um we call it buttercream icing here which you know if you have like a sponge cake it's like the sweet buttery filling that you put in the middle of the cake I get, I get, we get yeah. a lot of that. Buttercream. Yeah, butter, buttercream. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very unhealthy. Yeah. Very bad for you. But oh, yeah, horrible. That's <laughs> not so like whiskey good. at all. Whiskey's whiskey's the complete opposite. Um, yeah, that's solely healthy for you. Exactly. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm to just be, gonna. To, to be honest, I, I I believe that day drinking a glass of whiskey daily is way better than eating butter like buttercream every day. That is possibly <laughs> true. Possibly true, um, yeah. I'm not a scientist, but yeah, yeah I'm going to call it as true, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Lucia, I'm what... just going to distance myself. <laughs> Lucia, what do you get uh, get out of um, it? I'm getting a lot of wintry spices. Okay. Like cloves. Clo- yeah, no, so you kind of get more of the kind yeah. of spicy cherry type side of it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's And I had to get through that a bit uh, before smelling the sweetness. And now I now I do. Especially the the peach tart, um, um, complements each other. But before before we try our first sip, um, can I say that I don't on the nose? I don't get the fifty eight percent. I do. It's 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 yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 But as we know, I'm a bit more of a forty percent girl. <laughs> uh, we do get different reactions though. Like I've had some people like being like, "Oh, this t- you know, if you drink this, it doesn't taste um, you know, it doesn't taste like cast strength at all." And then I had someone who tried it once, and they were like, "Oh my gosh, this is like rocket fuel!" Um, you know, great review. Uh, <laughs> that is, yeah. I'm looking forward for it to it. Um, are we are we missing some notes that uh, that that you get out of it, or do we basically tick off all the? I think you picked off all the ones on the nose that I always kind of get out of it. Um, I, I agree with the kind of the, the fruits. I kind of get some or- like some orange oiliness as well um, myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny whenever people tell say things to me, then I can only t- smell that as well. And I get, you know, that's this, this, <laughs> this, this why I never like to tell people what they should smell because then it's like, oh no, it's all I can smell. Um, but we had um, <laughs> one of the stockists gotcha. uh, of our whiskey in Edinburgh. It's a great little shop. If you ever go to Edinburgh, um, if any of your listeners ever go there, if you come out of Waverley, sta- uh, Waverley Station onto Market Street, there's a great whiskey shop there called mm-hmm. Jeffrey Street Whiskey and Tobacco. Fantastic independent shop, and they they stock us in Edinburgh. And um, when they they were trying it, um, Hector, one of the guys who who runs it, um, yeah, he get he got a lot of. He was saying rose water as well, almost like, almost like Turkish, okay. you know, uh, the, the pink Turkish delight kind of flavor as Turkish well. Turkish delight. Um, so I get yeah. a bit of that on the nose as well to add to the fruitiness. There was this one note, and I thought of it like it was more this 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 um, malting, like this malty. Um, Barley, like this, this dust that you get from mm-hmm. from grinding the the, the, the barley, the flour? but it wasn't it wasn't. <laughs> yes, thank you, the flour, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it didn't. Only breathe in and then cough when you're in the tiller, like but yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it, it wasn't quite right. But now after smelling it again and trying to figure it out, it does remind me of like the molting of rye. Yeah. 
Huh. No, I can, I can, yeah, I can totally get that as well. Though. Yeah, it does. You know, I really do like. I actually quite like a kind of rye, rye whiskey as well. Like these grain, strong grainy rye type flavors. I really, I really like them. So no, I could pick that out a little bit as well for sure. <laughs> Tell me anything, right. I'll pick it up. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to uh, to your first tape, uh, Ian. Thank you yeah, so much. No worries, Slanjiba. Thank you for having me on. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, this is so dangerous. This is warm, nice, and also 58.8%. Yes. <laughs> I do taste that in the finish. To, to be but honest. This is nice. This, is, this isn't the perfect dram to start your day off with. I think that this is more like this 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 banger that you have to 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 finish off the evening. Y you wrote on the bottle. Uh, think of this as a comforting yet um, Moorish, Moorish. Yeah, Moorish. Yeah, Moorish. Yeah, probably not a very good word, yeah. but yeah, Moorish. Yet a Moorish dessert at the end of a cracking meal, and I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I 100 percent mm -hmm. totally agree with it. it, it this it's is a proper Christmas meal. Yeah. With this as a finishing touch. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I can do with that. Sure. I almost think it's um, weird though. Like you could have it in a different situation. Like I, I agree with you. I would like this after, like a hearty meal or the end of a very long work day when you need something, you mm -hmm. know, something robust. With substance. Yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> something robust yet drinkable. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to kind of set settle the nerves for the next one. Um, or but equally though, I've had like. Um, we had like a ridiculously hot, and it's probably very hot over where you are right now. I don't know. It's not um, maybe not not quite the heat wave that the rest of Europe's getting, but um, but mm -hmm. not. We had a really hot June, and yeah, and it's and yeah. it's still like mm -hmm. a, in the middle of the day or something like that. I wouldn't mind a drink like this kind of um, even even. I don't know. It's probably scandalous to say it, but you could even if it was a hot, baking hot, forty degrees summer with a cube of ice or something like that, and it actually works okay as well. Um, because I'm not really, and I never, I never really have, I would never have ice with whiskey. Um, you know, I think that sometimes there's a situation where you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, I I feel like this can definitely stand its own against an ice cube in 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 it. I not totally like, feel like, like the huge Death Star totally sized open. ones that you get in like um, <laughs> and some of the like the, the, the fancy <laughs> art that you see in Asia or something like that. Uh, so they look amazing, yes. but I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, that's a large ice cube. You better drink that whiskey fast. No, I, uh, like the, the the bigger the surface area, the slower it melts. So it's uh, it, it will probably dilute lo less quick uh, as a small ice cube. I do wonder what a drop of water will do. I'm just gonna. Yeah, hundred percent. It's one of these ones because because obviously it is cask strength, and yeah, it's always good to when you try it for the first time to give it a try and neat, and then uh, yeah, add a few drops, see how you get on with it, and if you you know if you prefer it without, then you know what you need to do next time. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely love it, but I I feel like I it, the sherry uh, cask comes through way more intense on the on on the flavor than it does on the nose, mm. and now. After I, I had a first sip, now I'm like, oh yes, it has this very nice red fruit. Is this compote? Uh, Try this. Lucia has diluted it. I added two drops of water, so diluted it. Damn. Very, very, very mentally. Bit, it smells like freshly cut grass. Right? <laughs> it's a forest. It's a fruity forest. Fruity forest. Those kind of flavors always remind me of like um of Macmira whiskeys. Yeah, I pref I pref probably prefer it. I probably like I say I I probably prefer it without um without. But yeah, a hundred percent. If you um if you've got this at home, then yeah, I would definitely you can you can give it a wee try with some water because it does open it up. Being at fifty eight point you know fifty eight point eight percent, it is a, it is fairly hefty. But yeah, I find it weirdly I do find it weirdly mm -hmm. drinkable as it is. But I'm probably just too used to drinking cast strength whiskeys and sampling lots of cask samples so like mm -hmm. you know it's probably my problem rather than uh, me being right <laughs> to to be honest i'm i'm, I'm also right wrong in taste though yeah no definitely but it's more I'm, I'm also like a big fan of like this this big hefty flavors and this yeah this this sticks all those boxes yeah definitely <laughs> um how did you decide to pick these two casks so these two casks well honestly we Obviously, so I wanted to make a, to to make a blend. Then um, I haven't got reams of reams of single grain, um, and the one we have we had the ones that we do have are kind of quite old. So we'll be releasing them as like like we always um like to bring out whenever we do a kind of copper and oak series, or we like to bring out one of them as a um, as a single grain because we really like grain whiskey. So um so yeah, uh, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. How, did, how, how did we choose what was in this one? Well, we, ha- we have some younger grain, which is what kind of like so the Cameron Brig um, a, a 11 year old. We have got a few extra hogsheads of that, not loads. Um, so I wanted to kind of choose a Cameron Brig as well because we haven't because we're based in Fife. Um, we were kind of founded in St Andrews and then all our casts are looked after by a bond in Uchter Mufti, um, which is a great Scottish place name if mm-hmm. you ever. If you ever want to go there, yeah. it's actually where the Proclaimers are from. So, so if anyone knows the the five hundred miles song, oh, okay. that they were from after Mukti. Yes. Um, ah. So that's where the whiskey is looked after for us. Um, so, but we hadn't brought anything out, out yet from Fife. Um, and being based from Fife, so because Cameron Brig that was in that was based in Fife, it seemed like a no brainer. Well, if we're if we're gonna pick a single grain, and we want to make this affordable. Um, pick a slightly younger one, finish it off, give it some, you know, round it off a bit, and but use 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 a five one, and then yeah, what to what mm-hmm. to go with? So we tried it with a few tried it with a few things, um, but um, I just find the Deanston it, it can be a very versatile whiskey, um, and it was a kind of it was a mm-hmm. sister cast, the one that we we already had that we released in our, our copper and oak in permutations. It was the cast number was like one apart. Um, and it was obviously it was also quite a good okay, it was cool. quite a good price as well. Um, so we thought, well, we want to try and make this as affordable as possible. So we don't want to pick up, you know, we want to pick something that's going to make it that. Um, so a lot of it went into that, but also just the Deanston. I find the versatility is um, is quite good. So we're not completely like you know it is it is versatile and you can still get the characteristics from it, but we're not completely overpowering either one. So yeah, that was and we in all honesty we hadn't hadn't got millions of casts. I've got you know maybe about. 20 odd or something like that still to or maybe slightly more um if you count like new make that you know going to take quite a few years to become whiskey yeah um, yeah so we haven't got huge mm-hmm. amounts to choose from so it was quite a simple the kind of the two that would have worked <laughs> shouted out quite clearly and then it was just a matter of trying them and blending them together and just making sure that as well as working on paper it actually worked in reality as well i just have another tasting note oh. um oh, yeah. gingerbread gingerbread ah speculous yeah yeah with the with a bit of water, mm. so I don't know if that makes a difference, but it's spe- spe- echt a Hollandse speculaas. Yeah, so still still those Christmassy flavors. Yeah, it's definitely. I'm, Max I'm is s- looking at me. Yeah, I'm so I'm so sorry. I, I'm interested to see as well, like how <laughs> how it how it changes with it. You know, the the, the longer time in the sherry butts for sure. Um, mm-hmm. To see if we do, yeah, if we still have a lot of those fruity characteristics, or if we do get more overpowered by the sherry. Mm-hmm. To rectify this, yes, if you add water to it. You yeah, totally get one. those those um, gingerbread, definitely. Thanks. If Thanks. you don't add the water, I really find it very hard to find. But let me try. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you find something new every day. Well, I like gingerbread a lot, so I will definitely take that. I was wondering, you uh, like this is you mentioned like you still have the half of the cask, so that's something that we can look forward to. So basically, everyone buy two bottles, <laughs> spare one for for the next release. But beside of that, what comes after that. What, what what can we expect some more? Like what are some things you are working on? I heard new make. Yeah, yeah. So we've got got new make, got some new makes. Um, not entirely sure what the plans are for those ones yet. They're, those ones yet, to be honest, they probably will be. Um, we've got some um some of them we actually filled into. So we we had those um those Pedro Jimenez brandy um hogsheads, the one ones I mentioned, yeah. the kind of fifty year old ones. So we filled some of them with new make um from the Space Side Distillery. So I'm cool to see how they end up. Um going in future wow. but yeah we've got we've got like, some new make from a range of uh, a range of distilleries like quite a lot of new ones that have just been like opening up so no they, they will definitely feature most likely in our kind of um in our copper and open permutations when they're old enough to um, mm-hmm. to be ready um and yeah go, going forward obviously we touched upon there will definitely be a a Pictish beastie volume two featuring these two same casks and then uh going on there'll be more recipes for that one in future but Apart from that, we'll we'll still keep the uh, copper and oak series and permutation series going. So the before and after. So we've already got um the casts basically split and ready to go. So we've already finished them um for the next one. Uh, so it's not quite going to be as big because uh Aiden was very very keen on doing. Oh, we have to do a huge range of whiskies to be taken seriously, which was fine mm-hmm. on paper, but it meant a lot more work, a lot more costs, a lot more trying to manage eight whiskies at once is difficult. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um did did Aiden give you some more jobs to do, like get your hands on these casks or uh, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, well, at, at, when we started off, yeah, basically 
the way the way it kind of worked was <laughs> I was kind of um, Aiden was in charge of the whiskey and tasting it, and obviously we tasted it together. But he was the kind of chief taster and made all the kind of whiskey decisions, and he kind of mainly chose what to buy. Um, but obviously, mm-hmm. and then I kind of did everything else, which was kind of a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so I was kind of always. Uh, so to be fair, my um, since since he's passing earlier in the year. Uh, things haven't changed all that much apart from the fact that I just need to kind of make the whiskey decisions now. So the Pictish Beastie was the first one that I kind of chose what to do with it, created. We're only going to do four this time for the Copper and Oak and Permutations range. So we'll be bringing out the, the Copper mm-hmm. and Oak later in the year. Um, we've got one World Whiskey, we've got one single grain, and then um, we've got two single malts. And this time there'll be more, whereas last time it was more of a wine cask uh, finish themed. Um, this time it'll be more sherry because mm-hmm. um, we had access to some cool sherry casks. So we had some Palo Cortados, a Montiado, and a Finos. So we had wow. some wacky ones to play around with. Um, so yeah, some funky, uh, funky That's casks. Good. So we'll be using we'll be using them for sure. Um, so we'll we'll have that those two series coming out. Um, if it does, if the first copper, if the next copper note doesn't quite come out at the end of this year, then it'll be start of next year. Um, just because I've got um, we've I've got quite a few like um festival bottlings I'm doing this year as well. Um, which is kind of keeping me on my toes, mm-hmm. and hopefully you might be able to um uh, get a hand get get you. They should be all the festival bottlings should be like at some decent prices as well. So, um, there might even be some available online um from the kind of retailers if uh, if they aren't all if they aren't all sold sold out at the festivals themselves. So now there's some really cool casts ah, coming out for those. Ah. Damn. <laughs> I'm really, really so head excited. For the festival, no, though. you better come. Definitely, I know there's, there's yeah. too many to keep track of. So mm-hmm. I'll need to come and do some in the Netherlands as well, actually. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to a whiskey club in the Netherlands, and I, I forget the name about doing uh, doing a tasting later on in the year. Um, but yeah, so that might be something to watch out for for any of your listeners. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And if you uh, if if you're planning over to to visit uh, the Netherlands, just uh, send out a like a quick message to me so we can uh, maybe hook you up to get a taste and do a tasting here in the south. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think the I've got it here actually. The whiskey club later in the year. I think um it's, it's called Whiskey Club um Utrecht. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, 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 in the middle of the country. That's big old city. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's two hours drive from here. It's yeah. See, my Random knowledge down. of Netherlands is awful. I've only driven through it once, and a long time ago. <laughs> It's lovely. To, to be honest, the most servers only know Amsterdam, so <laughs> you, you always want up, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll 100 percent know. I'll definitely let you know if I'm coming across. Definitely, very cool. And thanks so much. You, f- you are more than welcome. More than welcome here. Um, I'm just one wondering, like you, you mentioned, like okay, you, you don't want to play the trumpet for the rest of your life. Uh, now you're you get your hands like totally uh, on whiskey uh, all the time, but. Are, is there a crossover coming between the two? Is there something which a whiskey that's inspired by music or music inspired by whiskey? Yeah, maybe I'll whiskey have to do. Um, in a trumpet. Uh, well, we've done we've done the music inspired by whiskey already. Actually, that was um, uh, we were me and my brother released a song during lockdown called "Whiskey in the Hand." Um, so if you Google if you YouTube that one, then you can have a laugh. Uh, that's me and me and my brother Andrew. Um, <laughs> Oh, we will be editing. It now. will be added at the end of this episode. You people can listen to it. No oh, problem. Oh, great! Oh, excellent. But yeah, no, it's a. It was a funny video where because we were all locked down, basically, we kind of have a dram and then pass it through the screen, and then the next person gets it. And so we had lots of friends and it's family adorable. just like passing this whiskey and then tasting it and passing it. So yeah, that song was called Whiskey in Hand, and our band is called Bra, uh, B R A W, which is like a, a good Scottish word. Um, so yeah, we we uh, we haven't done we haven't released anything for a while. We we will again, but yeah, we're all the stuff still on Spotify and all wherever you listen to music. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll have and maybe we'll have to do a whiskey that is then influenced by the music. Kind of for some reason, the one that sprung to mind when you said that was um I don't know if anyone's ever seen the Aaron whiskey bottling yeah. um that they do for their kind of music festival every year, and it comes in like a little guitar case. Yeah. It's very cool. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I'm I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. to. Yeah, I haven't it. tried it, but I just think it looks very cool. It looks mm-hmm. like a little band, a little ukulele or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Like this, this, this top, top of the shelf uh, collector's item. Really cool. Mm-hmm. If you could make any whiskey you wanted, anything, anything, let your imagination run wild. Get your hands on any cask you wanted. What would you release? Oh. It's a difficult one. Um, and even though you gave me the question beforehand, uh-huh. I was like, oh, I still, I should really think about this, like, <laughs> and come up with an answer. But um, if I probably, Here I am trying to sound spontaneous. I know, I know, but trying to um, just probably, I have a kind of family connection to the Isle of Arran. Um, 
So I would probably love just to go through, if I, as an independent bottler, I would love to just have a free reign to go through the Aaron Warehouse, you know, trying everything that he wanted and pick mm-hmm. out a cast. That would be amazing. Um, I know Aiden um, mm-hmm. would have wanted something Talisker, which I know is always very difficult to get your hands on as an independent bottler because Diageo yep. can be quite tricky in what they release and quite hard to deal with. Um, so he would definitely be a kind of old Talisker for sure. Um, and then, But then hopefully some point in the future like long-term plans is we'd love to have it like a tiny little distiller, distillery of our own um so that would be the dream if we could mm-hmm. do any whiskey it'd be it would be our own to make it um and distill it um so um that would be that would be a lovely plan in a few years time um if we could uh, do that in five somewhere only tiny probably like my uh, like a nano distillery mm-hmm. um something like you see these new, these Scottish islands doing like you see the Barra Distillery and the Tyree Distillery, just a tiny thing. That would be the plan going forward if uh, if everything worked out well. That would be lovely. I think that would that be an amazing goal. Really yes. looking forward to it. And of course, you'd be welcome to come across. Thank you so much, <laughs> Ian. I'm looking so much like so forward to all the different expressions, and and hopefully we can have you on as a guest in the future again. Um, I really really like this first expression of the Pictish Beastie. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think that this is an amazing dram. Um, people, if you want to get your hands on a bottle, be quick. Uh, 250 bottles is sold out very quickly. Um, if they want to get get a bottle, where can they buy one currently? It's on the website. and it's Yeah, they can, they can buy one from, uh, from the website, which is just uh, tipwhiskey.scot. And if you just search tip whiskey on Google, it'll do it. We'll come up. So, uh, you can get a bottle there. Um, like I say, you can't get it in the Netherlands yet. I can I can send it across and it's mega speedy. Um, I, I can yeah, testify, that's true. If you have any, <laughs> if you have any, yeah, it's true, yeah. If you have any importer friends who might, who you might want to tell they should get this whiskey, then uh, we can maybe sort some cast. Some, it'd be great to sort some private casks just for the Netherlands in the future. That'd be a cool thing to do. Really, I'm looking forward to it. And if people wanna, um, if if people wanna follow the whole FIP story, where can they go? So yeah, you can go on to. Uh, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter it's Fib Whiskey it's all the same handle um, you can even go on TikTok which I'm trying to do even though TikTok is like a whole minefield like a whole other world <laughs> I'm looking at it <laughs> uh, we, we do be- me and my brother we, we do better as a band on, on TikTok but the 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 um the, it's I find it harder with the alcohol industry because I don't even know if alcohol like everyone seems to have it but it's like I don't even know if it's like a, you're meant to have alcohol on TikTok so I don't know um, we don't care. But, uh, yeah, you can you can follow us on all of those, or um, yeah, just uh, sign up. You can sign up to our mailing list on uh, just on the website. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you just go on the contact page, stick your email on there, and then when I remember, I will I send out mailings when important things happen or when important things are coming, so that you can get pre warning. Really amazing. That sounds good. Ian, thank you so much for your time and this amazing whiskey to to share with us and the people at home. Uh, for everyone listening in the Netherlands, uh, if you wanted to try this whiskey with us, you needed to have our podcast subscription. Yes. You can go to the Elements of Whiskey.nl dash podcast and you get some more information slash. on it. Slash. Slash? Slash. Ah. Da- dash is in statue. I was so close. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Elements of Whiskey and you can follow Lucia. At Elements of Lucia. And I would love to see you guys soon for the next episode. Ian, I'm looking forward to meet you uh, anytime soon when you're visiting the Netherlands. <laughs> Very much. Wonderful. So. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. I look, yeah, I look forward to hopefully meeting you both at some point in the future for sure. Thank you so much. All right, see ya. Your tired mind has suffered plenty. The day attacks away your glow. It seems your soul's feeling so empty. Drained by fears and daunting goals Take a minute, fill your glass Raise a toast to all that's past For a moment, close your eyes Let the evening fleet on by Rest ye now, ye journeyman With a whiskey in hand Don't yearn to hold the sun from setting The 
It's time to rest in dark embrace. Take a minute, feel your loss. Raise a toast to all that's past. There's nothing you can do but enjoy the angels too. Whiskey in hand, with a whiskey in hand. 